Hey guys, um, I just want to show you what I've been working on. I've been doing this the past two days. Um, basically, I've I always need in in any serious application, you've got tabular data like this. You've got just data from a database that you need to show in some way or another, and that data uh, usually it's not sufficient to just have a table and show the information. Like for example, um, well you know what I'm not going to click around here. Uh, well, here you go. But if I go to like the categories, it's just got boom a list. It looks fine. These are editable. It's got some stuff going on. But it's I mean I can't sort by these columns. It's all these functionality you have to add. Uh, so in those cases, what we do is we go find a grid component. Okay. So we found a couple. I've used I've used this before. Uh, Flex Grid. Uh, it's got a cool shows you the columns. Blah 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 blah. Uh, it's got it's got a full featured one. We've got buttons up here and different styles and you can hide columns and page and paging is a huge thing that's one of the biggest things about these grids is paging and Ajax examples blah 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 um, but then then they have another then there's another one called JQ grid which I've also used before kind of meshes in there with uh, J with uh, jQuery and jQuery UI but a lot of these have a, a flaw that I hate and it's the setup that's involved it's not that it's hard to do it's that it's that you have to do it every time and then if you don't want to have to do it every time you have to make a wrapper function and then you're doing a lot of coding so let's take a look at some of the examples that jq grid does here's how you set up uh jq grid for for, for uh in the javascript section so you build this this javascript object where you define all your stuff you define your column names and your model and the rows and all this stuff and then you've got a paging thing down here it's kinda of hard to read editing adding deleting etc okay this is kind of convoluted already then you've got the PHP side because these grids connect to a database so you've got you've got all this stuff and I mean I'm not even gonna sit here and read through this but basically they're getting some PHP variables from the URL it looks like connecting to a database doing some selects they're they're literally doing a straight count here you you've got to come up with your own query um, doing some response and blah, blah 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 there's a lot going on now, all this you have to do if you just want to use a grid okay let's look at flex grid and see if it has the same problems so look at the sample code um, we need to see some of their PHP examples so if we if we download so show sample PHP for JSON okay again this is cleaner looking but you still you've got you have to do this every single time and it, it doesn't make sense to have to do and so you would have to make your own class and you'd have to make a wrapper again if you if you want to do it multiple times and it's, it's not, I mean it's even got stuff hard coded in here I mean it's got you know and then the, the JSON the JavaScript for this is almost the same where it's um You've got a, a JSON, you know, this is cleaner looking, but how they put it out. But same, almost the exact same thing. You choose your data type, your URL. Anyway, data's convoluted. I probably spent way too long on that. Let's look at the one that I've been working on. I'm not saying mine's better. I'm just saying I'm going at it with the approach that I want to put a table and I want it to be a grid. That's the approach, okay? So this isn't full featured yet. I've just been building it for two days. But basically, you can look at these columns. You can sort by these headers. Okay, it's it's really easy. Um, you can page next and page back. Uh, you can tell it. You say I want 15 results. It gives you 15 results. If I do like 30 results, it'll add a scroll bar at a certain level. That's controlled with CSS because hey, it's the style of the grid, so I expect to be able to style it with CSS, right? So let's go back to 10 to make it easier to look at. Then we've got a cool search here, which actually will um, filter on the screen so uh, say I want to look for all the ones that have adaptive right so I'll type in adaptive and it'll, it'll filter right on screen and let's say I actually want to search back to the database this query um, I can actually hit enter and it'll actually search the database this is actually new database results now so filtering by typing and by hitting enter it's going to actually do that query on the database okay here's the cool thing about this grid okay it's it's styled with CSS, okay? So you've got one CSS file that, that styles that guy, okay? And like, here's my width right here. It is super simple. My max height right there. Like, literally, if you know CSS, you can easily do the dimensions. You don't have to set any JavaScript parameters. And then, even cooler than that, 
this page that it's on, this is the code for that right here. There's no JavaScript on the page. No, there's no JavaScript on the page at all. I didn't have to set up any JavaScript. All I did was have a table. That's it. I'm calling it class grid. That's the key that I'm calling it class grid. Okay, and then I'm giving it an action. I'm telling it, okay, what's going to be my Ajax URL? And for me, mine's just, I'm using an MVC that I've been building, so I'm calling this PHP function. This is just, don't, you could call a PHP file, okay? Um, and then, and then have it run. But for me, it's just calling this, okay? And then you, you just have your THs, and then you've got uh, an attribute call that says, basically the database entry for this. What's the database entry? And then what do you want to call it? Okay. These classes are just for widths. I just have some CSS classes that are making these widths a little bit narrower. Okay. That's all that is. So this is all you have to do to make a grid. You, you, you include three files. You include, uh, well, okay, there's, all right, there's one small other step, but it's really simple. Okay. So you basically have your grid.js file. This is built on jQuery, so you got to have jQuery. Okay, and you gotta have your grid CSS file. That's what you need there, and you just gotta make this this PHP function. Now you're thinking, well, that's that's the same problem the other ones had is that you have to make the PHP function. Well, let's look at the PHP function. This is all it is. This is it. This is all it is. You require my PHP file, okay, which is a class. I've made a class for this. I've already made a class for this. That's the point. So you just require the PHP file. You say new grid. You give it what table you want and the post parameters. Um, I'm I'm safely uh, I'm using my own function to safely um, cleanse the input or sanitize the input. You don't have to do that. You could you could use underscore post. Uh, that's just fine. But I'm going to use post because I've sanitized my input. Okay, and then you could send it uh, a bunch of a bunch of joins here. If you had a table that had a bunch of joins, you could uh, send it an array here of a bunch of joins and it would join those together for you. Um, I don't need to do that for this. This is a very simple um, a, a very simple grid. And then all, all you do, all it stores the data, the data that you need to get back as as grid data. I mean it's, I'll show you the file in a second. But And then you just, the, all this JSON does is just echo out the JSON object. Like I can show you this JSON. Um, you don't need to have this function. That's just part of my thing. Uh, this JSON, all all it does is J, ec, JSON encode the data. Mine logs it. That's why I have a function for it. So that's all you'd have to do. Require this file, and then you could use it just like this. Now let's take a look at this file. Um, uh, let me see how much time I have. Cool. All right, let's take a look at this file, um, grid.php. It's not hard at all. It this is it's 83 lines. It's not much. Okay. All it is is class grid. Uh, here's that data variable. It's taking in table post and joins, and I'm just I'm gonna run through this real quick. Um, it's basically, and I'll explain this part when we get to the JavaScript part. But all it's doing is you have a comma list of the columns, right? So you're taking in the column list there, uh, and then you're exploiting it so you get an array of it. We're getting the order by from the post, the sort from the post, the number of rows to show from the post, the page from the post, and the start row from the post with some calculations. Okay, we're gonna pull, bring all the joins together. And then we're going to do the searching, which basically takes all of the columns that you had and joins them together using a like and that and that post, which basically gives you something like uh, like this, where it'll say where purchase date like this or like or this like this or this like this or this like this. Okay, it basically will do a, a MySQL query using or and like. Okay. Um, and it just sets up that whole thing for you automatically, and then and then this just defines the SQL, bring all that together. Um, this is a comma list, so it just selects those from the comma list um, from this table, brings those joins together, adds that where, which is those likes. Um, it sets up the order by and sets up the limit, and then uh, it it calls multi query and basically um, basically gets a result. What multi query is is it's a function that I've I've written, I've I've brought it in here. I don't. It doesn't necessarily need to be in this file. I actually have it in another file, but just for portability, this file can be thrown around now. It doesn't have to be inside of my framework. All all query multi does is just it does a MySQL result, loops through the results, and sends me back an associative array of the results. That's all it does. It's a really cool it's a really cool utility function. Feel free to use it. But I can immediately start using this variable after I do the query instead of having to get the query, check for it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then I set up the rows. And in a variable called rows. This is very a simple procedure. I'm just setting up the rows with the cells. 
And then I'm doing a quick little trick here. I'm taking I'm taking this exact same query, getting rid of the limit, and then running the query again, and this time getting the results and using my SQL num rows. So I can get the number of rows, number of rows. So I can do the uh, paging. And I'll just set up the rest of these variables to send back, and then I'll just store the variable. And that's all it's doing. It's just doing the basic stuff that you'd have to do in a wrapper class that's super easy to use. But right here, all you do is use that. Um, let's go ahead and look at the grid JS. I'm really running low on time, so I'll probably just run through this really quick. These are the things you can go ahead and read these that I want to do still that I haven't done yet. But basically, it's a jQuery plugin. Um, it just it, it has some defaults that aren't really used. You don't really need to set the defaults because a lot of that's CSS and a lot of these are just used. Um, it basically caches the grid file. It wraps the grid um, for you automatically. Uh, the reason it wraps the grid is so it can take, uh, it can basically put this pager in there and then eventually I'm going to take this header out. That way the um, when you get to like 30 rows or whatever, it can scroll and see how the page is still at the bottom, but these went away. Those won't go away anymore, and that's because I've wrapped the div. So it just wraps it a couple times because it's necessary. It basically cre it creates the pager at the bottom, which has a little custom function that just creates the pager right here. Um, and then this is a really, really cool thing going on here. I'm using the data um, object and basically storing all of the data on the data object itself and then if there's user options that you sent in it's going to extend the data object with that and then reset the data object uh, the whole point of that is that say I want to load the grid right uh, well you normally you just I would just call grid dot load grid and that reloads it with the with the default or it reloads it with the current data but you can pass in a new option uh, like I'm passing in the search option here so when you when you key down on the uh, on the uh, search right here, it's going to reload the grid, but send in the search results. So this is actually really easy to use as well. I've well commented this. When it's done, I'm going to release it. I don't have time to go through the rest. But if you guys are really interested in this video, I'll explain this a lot further. There's a lot of cool stuff and a lot of cool tricks going on in this script file. So hope you guys enjoy this uh, grid, and hopefully it'll be released pretty soon. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do, which is cool, is theming. So keep that in mind as well. I'll be doing some theming for it, but some mathematical theming. Like you just kind of pick your own color and it'll theme it based on that. It'd be pretty cool.